Welcome to our question and answers with Freedom Mobile Living. My name is Angelo Darren. If just stay tuned, we're going to answer some questions a lot of people have written into. They've added comments. We're going to respond to those as well. So stick tuned and we'll see you in a moment. In the meantime, if you feel like subscribing below, please do so because we'll alert you when my next video comes out. Thank you. wrote in he said I was just wondering with ride local being so new how does it work when somebody wants a ride and no ride drivers are working well the nice thing about it is when you get a rider you tie him into a driver and so let's say you're driving as a driver for new on the ride local pl platform you're adding clients to your platform so they're your personal riders as well as you're your their personal driver and so when they're requesting nine times out of ten, you are working those hours anyhow. That's how you pick them up in the first place. So a lot of thing, times we do is when I was developing the app itself, one of the coding problems we were having is if someone was driving and then let's say somebody requested a ride and that person driving was too busy, they wouldn't get alerted. So what we did is instead of having an instant broadcast, we put a 15 minute delay on the appointment time. And that way the appointments come through and you can select them as your schedule and as you're driving. So really the platform is meant for no customers whatsoever. Add your dry riders to it, fill the platform up from where you're busy on a full time basis or how long or how much you want to work. And then from that point, if you want to, you could add drivers underneath you and build a team of drivers. So that's a very good possibility by the licensing the, the app. So the, your answer to your question is, I mean, it's just like with me, when I'm getting riders, so I'm getting new clients, I'm passing out cards for free rides or $5 off. When they do request, I want to be able to get it. So I have my app on all the time. So there are, have been times at 2.30 in the morning, not everybody's going to be willing to do this, but at 2.30 in the morning, I get alerted. I have my clothes la laid out in a way where I can just kind of put them on real quick and get where you got to be. I've had over 37 years experience in business, creating income. Just, just in the last five years have I devoted that time to not only passive income, but also remote income. Follow me on my channel, subscribe below, hit the notification bell because I will show you how to turn your life into more freedom, less debt, more income, and independence. I have a question here dealing with asking about insurance and licensing in order for me to transport people in a ride share. Uber driver as well, I do carry what's called a TNC insurance rider on my current policy. And so that protects the people I am giving rides to. Uh, it also protects me as far as even when I'm delivering because uh, that's part of my insurance rider. Uh, as far as any other licensing, uh, I really don't need any other licensings but that to have a valid driver's license. I do have to have a vehicle that's 10 years or younger. That's state law generally across the nation. Uh, and so not only for ride local, but Lyft and Uber, I also have to have that as well. But that's pretty much all the requirements. Now, when I build it to a point where I have other drivers underneath me, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different game, uh, a, little, a little bit different, more requirements that would be required of me. But I'm not going to really cross that bridge until I come to it. The questions, one of us on an inspirational nomad. How long have I been living in the RAV uh, 2014 Toyota? I started out in August of 2020, so the 15th of August I started, and I had started from Michigan, and I started heading south at that point. It's funny how many people really kind of relate and say, hey, I can relate with you, you know, you don't have rent, you don't have utilities, you don't have all that overhead you got to deal with, you kind of have the freedom to go where you want to go. I get a lot of comments that people can relate to it because I really think people are sick and tired. They're sick and tired of living a life 
that they feel other people chose for them and they really can see the beauty of living a life on your terms and a life that you chose uh, yourself. The video on Lorenzo, a guy, Bob Van Life, he wrote in, he said, $200 a month, question mark. Says, no medical or vehicle insurance, gas for vehicles, cell phone. Understand that Lorenzo lives a life that's a little bit different than maybe you're a customer or I'm accustomed to. He doesn't use his vehicle to drive around, only from going from one place to another based on warmth and comfortability. Uh, so he doesn't really use the gas only to transport himself from like maybe Yuma, Arizona and then in the uh, uh, summer months he goes to Flagstaff where the nights are cooler. So he really doesn't have a lot of overhead. Uh, during the day he gets a lot of his food from the pantry. He really doesn't have that overhead. So $200 a month is generous. Now he's told me there's some times he has to really watch it. But he says a lot of times when he thinks about buying something, he can't fit it in his vehicle in his living condition anyhow, so why buy it? So uh, I don't think he really runs into a lot of problems of managing it and maintaining $200 a month lifestyle. Uh, another question I had come in from Jim R. R2. I'd like a living a nightmare, not a dream life, like a lot of people say. Why not strive instead for enough earnings and a comfortable home? Jim, I didn't do this because I didn't have enough earnings to support myself in a comfortable home. I had a comfortable home. I had uh, overhead in that. I did this to eliminate that because to me, I didn't see the value of it. Uh, I did it for years. I struggled for years. But it came at a point in time where income wasn't the issue. It's being strapped by the bills was. So either way, I have the money or not, or somebody has the money or not, you still have to pay it. So it still takes away from what you could do with that money instead. So really, that's what it's not a nightmare. If you, if you have to go into this type of lifestyle and you're forced to, then it would be a nightmare. But it's something you choose, it's something you investigate, it's something you've tried. I've tried different areas of showers, different areas of going to the bathroom, different ways of sleeping and so on. But I found every time I was searching for it, I found what I needed to find to feel comfortable and making it convenient. So that was very important to me. So I never looked at it as a nightmare. I could imagine it could be because... Uh, there was a time where I slept in a vehicle because I was forced to uh, in between uh, residents. I was forced to, and it was a miserable night. So <laughs> I guess I, I understand when you say nightmare because it could be a nightmare, but for me, it's never has been. If you plan for it and if you uh, look at the different ways you can, you will find things that you can do that are very comfortable in this lifestyle. Uh, I got to have a, something that's called a collapsible toilet. Now, I didn't buy it because I wanted to use it. Uh, I bought it for emergencies. That was it. Uh, the only time I've used it once is when I chose to, and that was to see how it was. And it's not that big of a deal. I think the bigger deal of it is disposing. <laughs> so anyhow, I but I did do it for emergencies, not because that's how I chose I was going to end up going to the bathroom. Was, uh, like Robin Jones, she... Uh, she says, it amazes me out there. Some people prefer to live that lifestyle, living in a car or a van, and it gives up freedom to get around, not spend tons of money on rent, and still not have a damn thing. That's just the way the world is. Check it out with Bob Wells videos. They show a lot of people on there who are in, on SSI, who can afford to pay for rent no more if their checks are way too small. Understand, Robin, if someone alerted me and said, hey, I have problems with my debt. The first thing I'm gonna do, I don't care if you live in your vehicle or not, or a van or whatever, the first thing I'm gonna do is give you one sound advice, reduce your overhead, because it's easier to do. It's easier to reduce your overhead than to increase the amount of money coming in. You can do both. But my first thing is to reduce your overhead. If you can reduce your head overhead, it gives you so much freedom, so much peace, so much lack of anxiety, you would be amazed by it. And just because you're used to being in sticks and bricks, you do everything in the morning. You get up in the morning, just like I do. You go into a living room or a kitchen, right? 
I don't go into the front seat. I might go into the outdoors, but I experience things of this world outside of my vehicle because my vehicle I use as a bedroom. And majority of the times I'm outside unless it's too windy, it's too cold or too hot. So those are the only times I'm not gonna be outside experiencing outside temperatures. So I understand how you feel about that because there are a lot of people on fixed incomes and if they were gonna ask me, hey, I have a limited income of $800 a month and I know somebody who does that and she's publicly said it, Linda over Serene Simple Life, she lives off like $800 a month. She supplements it by a few other things that she does like uh, say it, display it, cars that she sells. You know, good for her, innovative. Actually, that's the way to live, right? She's happy, she enjoys her days, she enjoys her life, and she's doing something to change it. So she's doing all the elements you need to do and have a fulfilled life and a happy life, and she's doing it. She chooses to do it that way. There's other ways she can do it. I mean, she could get into doing delivery. She could do and do a ride share. There's different things. She chooses to do it the way she needs to do it. That's comfortable for her and that she can live with. And that's really important. All of us are so different. I've seen people who couldn't live in a certain way I do. And I've seen people that once they see it and understand it, then they say, oh, I can do that. So everybody is different. You have to find what the why is for you. And you have to find what the comfort level and where that would be.